What does it take to become a Microsoft MVP? This is a question that I get asked a great deal. In this video, we're going to find out. Stay tuned. Hi, Peter Rising here. I'm a Microsoft MVP in M365 Apps and Services. And that is what we're going to be talking about today, the Microsoft MVP program. But what exactly is a Microsoft MVP? Well, the initials stand for Most Valuable Professional. You may have thought it was Minimum Viable Product. I'm sure there are a number of different acronyms out there for what MVP can stand for. But in the Microsoft world, it stands for most valuable professional. Now, what do these MVPs actually do? Well, they are passionate experts in their field of technology within Microsoft. And that can be across a broad range of technology focus areas. You can be a Microsoft MVP who is uh, an expert in Microsoft 365 itself, in apps and services. It can be focused on endpoint security. It can be security itself. It can be uh, Azure. It can be data center. There are many, many categories of MVP that you can be fit into if you are eligible for the program. Now, this is a program that has been going for a very long time. I myself am a, a two-time Microsoft MVP. I'm very, very privileged to be part of this wonderful community of uh, people from all around the world who give their time and their passion and their expertise to the wider tech community outside of their own jobs to help people to learn and grow and share technology in the Microsoft world. So how does that journey begin? Why would you want to become a Microsoft MVP? Should that even be your goal? It's an interesting question and one that I get asked a great deal. I'm proud to be part of the MVP program, but to reflect back on my own journey to becoming a Microsoft MVP, it wasn't a goal that I actually set out to achieve really. It was one of those happy accidents, if you like, and it all started when I took my first Microsoft certification. I was never somebody who was any good at exams. In fact, I rebelled against the idea, but my boss at the time in the organization that I was working at said to me, Peter, you've got some great skills. Customers like working with you. Uh, there's one thing missing though. You haven't got any certifications. I was dubious about attempting to do a Microsoft certification, but I agreed, thinking that mm, I'll give this a go, but in my mind I'd already failed. To my surprise, my extreme surprise, I passed the exam and this led me on a journey of falling in love with learning and taking Microsoft certifications. I think I did something like seven certifications in the space of about six months and no one was more shocked or delighted than me. This led to me writing my first book. Now, writing a book was something that I always wanted to do. It was a passion of mine, a goal of mine. It was on my bucket list. Uh, never did I imagine that I would end up writing a technical book, but that's what came to pass. I had a message on LinkedIn from a publisher, Pact Publishing, who I have now developed a great working relationship with. I'm working on another book with them now. The outcome of that initial relationship was agreeing to write this book. This is the uh, Microsoft 365 Security Administration MS500 exam guide. Now, you can still get this on Amazon and on the PACT website as well, but I'm gonna tell you, don't buy it because it's massively out of date now because it was written in late 2019 and published in early 2020. I've been working on a second edition of this book, but due to Microsoft cancelling the uh, MS500 examination, that book is now being repurposed as a general security administration guide. But I digress, that's not what we're here to talk about today. After writing that book, my boss at the time had another conversation with me and said, do you know, Peter, that sort of contribution to the wider Microsoft technical community is something that could potentially qualify you for the Microsoft MVP program. And I thought to myself, no, not me. That's something that other people do. And I thought of some of the more well-known MVPs that I was aware of in the UK where I live at the time. But 
the thought persisted in my mind and uh, having taken some examinations, I did think to myself that this is a challenge that I would quite enjoy. So I looked into it a little bit more. I found out that in order to become a Microsoft MVP, you needed to be nominated by an existing MVP or a full-time Microsoft employee. I had some conversations with a couple of existing MVPs who gave me some great advice on what the program was all about, what it meant to be an MVP, and how you went about doing it. The first really great piece of advice was that it shouldn't really be the goal. It shouldn't really be the outcome that you have in mind. What you should have in mind as part of your MVP journey is to have a passion to give back to that wider Microsoft technical community, to have a passion for learning, to have a passion for sharing. And indeed, the motto of my YouTube channel here now is to learn, share, and repeat. I am living by that motto. I, I love to learn. I love to share what I've learned, to pass that on, to pay it forward as the saying goes, and to do it all over again. I get a real buzz out of that. And I found that the many MVPs that I've got to know really well and now call very, very dear friends feel the same. They have an energy, a passion about learning and sharing and paying that forward, enabling others to take that same journey that they have been fortunate enough to be on. The pleasure for me is in that sharing experience and most of the MVPs that I know will definitely say the same. Now, when you get to a certain point of contributing to the community, then you can be nominated for the MVP program. And if you are lucky enough to be nominated, you will have a conversation with a community program manager who will assess whether this is the right journey for you. It may be that that's not the case. It may be that you're on the wrong path, but you may be ready to take that step and join that community of Microsoft MVPs around the world. How can you contribute though? What sort of things can you do? There is a multitude of things that you can consider and you don't have to be everything to everyone. There are lots of things. You can be a blogger, you can write a blog and share your technical expertise via blogging. You can uh, do a YouTube channel like this and uh, share your, your knowledge of tech and your passion for tech via that medium. You can contribute to learn.microsoft.com. Everyone knows by now how passionate I am about that uh, particular website. It is so valuable and it's free and anyone can contribute to it with a GitHub account. You can speak at conferences. Now that in itself is a difficult thing to get into though and not something that everyone has the confidence to do. So a good way to maybe progress to that is to start small and work up to that. And a great way to get started, to get your foot in the door with speaking, is to look for a community group, a meetup group or a user group. And many of these are in person, maybe local to you, but many of these now are virtual. Many of these started in COVID and, and stayed virtual, or some are hybrid now. Uh, a user group that I am privileged to co-run with uh, Al Erdley and fellow Microsoft MVP, Rue Campbell, is the M365 Security and Compliance User Group. And we get such a buzz from uh, inviting speakers to our user group on a monthly basis and hearing them talk and share their passion. Many of those are MVPs. Many of our previous speakers were not MVPs at the time and starting their journey with speaking and have since progressed to become MVPs and become well-known speakers in the community. So don't feel that you have to do everything. This is a mistake that I made when I was on my initial journey of being advised on becoming uh, an MVP. I tried to dabble in a bit of everything, but eventually found my feet in uh, contributing to the Microsoft tech community. Those tech community forums at techcommunity.microsoft.com. They are also a great way of helping people by sharing your knowledge, your expertise, answering questions, having your answer marked as the best response. And it really does give you such a buzz when you've been able to make a difference to somebody's day. So 
That is what the MVP program is all about. And it is so great when you are nominated and when you are put forward to the award committee panel and ultimately when you get that award email, you find yourself in disbelief. And I think most of my fellow MVPs tend to agree uh, that that's the immediate feeling when they get that email. Wow, I can't believe this has actually happened. Uh, it's such a great feeling. But an even better feeling than that is the ability to pay that forward, to pay it back. And once you are an MVP, you then have that privilege of being able to look around the community and mentor others on that same journey and nominate those individuals to become MVPs themselves. I'm always happy to hear from people who aspire to join our amazing community. There are loads of opportunities to get involved in so many different ways. So if it's something you think you'd like to do and potentially get on that MVP journey as a byproduct of that discovering community as a passion, then have a think about it. You may just find yourself on a really, really cool accidental journey as I did. That's all for this video, folks. As ever, please subscribe, please like and share and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. If you wanna get in touch with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Please check me out on Twitter as well. I'm at M365Rising. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.